Welcome into Discern after the new year. It is Monday, January 3rd. I'm Ross, and we are joined today by guest contributor Nick Pitts. Welcome in, Nick. Hey, so great to be with you. So Nick is a senior fellow at the Institute for Global Engagement. He's filling in for Jim today. Nick, can you just tell us a little bit what that means? Yeah, yeah. So I um, I was originally at Dallas Baptist University and, and then worked with Jim Dennison while I was there and um, and now transitioned over to the corporate world. But as similar to kudzu, it's really hard to get rid of me. And so during part-time efforts, I, I help out over at the Institute for Global Engagement, contributing white papers and doing research in my spare time. Well, we appreciate you filling in. You know, again, with Discern, what we're doing is we're trying to look at what's happening in the world and really understand that from a biblical perspective. And, you know, essentially, rather than ignore it or, you know, close our ears to it, we want to understand it and and really explore it together. And so Nick's going to help us do that uh, for a couple of days here uh, at the start of the new year. And actually, today we're going to talk about the metaverse. We've talked about the metaverse before, but this is going to continue to snowball, I think, as this gets a more prominent topic in the news. And so we're going to hit a headline reg regarding Nike. This is actually from December 13th. We've been keeping an eye on some of these headlines. This is from CNN. Nike said on Monday, December 13th, it had bought virtual sneaker company RTFKT for an undisclosed sum as the sportswear giant looks to quickly expand its footprint in the fast-growing metaverse. Last month, Nike became one of the first big brands to enter the shared virtual world that gained prominence after Facebook recently rebranded itself to Meta Platforms. In such blockchain-based environments, users can buy virtual land and other digital assets such as clothing for avatars in the form of a crypto asset called a non-fungible token. So Nick, there's some words in there. Non-fungible token is one that a lot of people like to joke about. Um, can you just help us unpack what is a non-fungible token? What is this metaverse thing uh, and what stands out to you? Yeah, so uh, I guess a very simpl simplistic version of a non-fungible token would be similar to how there used to be a day that we would trade baseball cards one with another that kind of signified either uh, baseball players or basketball or football. And now NFTs, what they're doing is they're, it's, it's primarily around sports and other type of entertainment options to try to commemorate one particular uh, picture or scene. And so, but just being in a digital version now that's unique, similar to a basketball card. There's a limited uh, edition of them, whether it's one or 20 or 30, et cetera. Um, what's unique about this is that increasingly, as many of us became aware in March of 2020, um, more and more Americans are starting to live and move and have their being in a digital world. Um, that's not only just with the uh, baseball cards or uh, the NFTs that we're trading around the pieces of art that those might be to just even um, having certain avatars and having figures represented in a type of cyber world in which they can either go to work and participate in work meetings there or just have fun and, and kind of build like you would do in a video game that many of us are probably familiar with either now in the moment and especially growing up. Yeah, and I read Snow Crash uh it came out in 1992, which was back then a sci-fi picture. And I, I believe one of the first sort of ideas of this metaverse in fiction. And fast forward, here we are in 2021, almost 2022. And well, we're in 2022 now, and it's here. And so one of the things that was interesting about that book was this virtual real estate. And, and I always thought that was so crazy to think that there would be, you know, individually owned virtual assets that accumulate value in this in this new world. That's exactly what this article with Nike is talking about. And it's just showing us, I mean, this metaverse thing is happening. People are going to be getting into it and engaging in it in a much deeper way. Can you talk about some of the things that we'll see different about the immersive nature of the metaverse as compared to kind of the other social platforms we've seen, Instagram, Facebook, which are not as immersive? Yeah, I, I think what, one of the things that you're going to start to see is just individuals increasingly are going to want to start to, again, to use the biblical narrative, to live and move and have their being in this type of world. Um, uh, it's happening with the convergence of uh, the work from home movement, where we've all seen an uptick in the number of individuals that are working there. And we've all probably experienced some of the pushback or some of the frustrations of trying to be on a, uh, a Teams call or a 
Zoom call. It's just not the same as being around a table and meeting with one with another. And I think in the metaverse, it's the attempt to solve kind of some of those uh, technological woes that might keep us from fully being present in a very sci and still a cyber capacity. And so I think what we'll start to see is very similar to what the human experience is in that you're going to start to see, you'll see generosity, you'll see bartering that's happening, you'll see purchases that are happening. And unfortunately, I think you'll start to see the brokenness of humanity begin to reap its head uh, in this particular place as well. Yeah, and there is an article that just came out where I think it's maybe the first or one of the first beta user cases of abuse. And so already kind of in the beta stage, you're seeing the, the, that virtual world already having to deal with some of that sin creeping in and and they even have designed you know what they call i think a safe zone and they've designed some safe measures that you can activate within the world to already start to combat so they already are aware of some of those things that can happen and and again we've already seen that first report so you're dead on with with that yeah theory. i think i think there's a there's a multitude of things that we can point back to uh one is uh, unfortunately uh, started in asia in particular you saw it, it's not necessarily us going into the metaverse, but rather technology coming to us. And you see a rise in these type of sex robots, et cetera, the utilization of technology to bring uh, gratification to us. And now we're starting to see it immersed in this metaverse where individuals are starting to uh, sexually abuse individuals within these cyber spaces. Um, and but we've always known things like this happen. This has been something that's been prevalent, I would say, on social media platforms uh, for a time now. And it's just a, it's a part of the human experience, unfortunately. Um, in sociological terms, it's called de-individuation. Um, it's this idea that we act differently the more barriers that are separated between me and another person. We've all probably either experienced or been individuals that have uh, acted a little differently on the road than we would in person. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot easier to be rude to someone on the road and cut them off, whereas you would never do something like that in the grocery store behind a cart. Why? Because you've got a car barrier that's limiting um, your interaction with that person, and. That, Unfortunately, I hope I'm wrong, but I would only think that this would increase in the cyberspace. Yeah, and I think we've probably all had that moment where we were rude in our car and then only to find out it was someone that we work with and we pull into the parking lot together. <laughs> we have to own that we, we were not so anonymous as we thought. Um, and uh, so when we try to process this again from a biblical lens, as believers with the metaverse, if it continues to grow... We're going to probably be expected to do commerce within it, with our within our jobs at some point. Um, it's something that the next generation is going to be dealing with. So, just what are some cautions or, or pointers that you would have for believers as we as we look at this technology? Yeah, I I mean there are there are two verses in particular that that just I think would inform a lot of how we need to start to interact, or at least principles that we need to move on from when we think about uh, interacting on the metaverse. One is the idea from 1 Corinthians 10, 31, that everything we do, whatever we eat or drink, uh, we do for the glory of God. Um, to recognize whether it's an avatar or whether it's me, myself, that's controlling the avatar. I want everything that I do to bring glory to God that would make his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven on earth in the metaverse or on earth in reality. So that would be the first operating principle. The second would be to recognize that these are individuals that were made in the very image of God. Now they are controlled by other individuals and um, uh, cyber people and these, uh, these individuals in the metaverse might not be individuals made in the image of God, but they're controlled by individuals made in the image of God. And they are, they are due the respect that, that God died uh, to show that they're worth. Um, and we have an opportunity, yet again, another opportunity to bear witness to his love for us by showing love to others. Yeah, and I think that's where we'll land this episode for today. I love that reminder that when you interact with these avatars, we just kind of not start to see them as anything other than people. I mean, these are, these are as you say, people created in the image of God. If you start to see them as less than that or somehow not that, then there's a road of danger down that path. And so, you know, again, it's hard to think about this in this early stage, but 
if we can be a light for Christ in the real world, we certainly would have that opportunity even in this technology. So these are things we'll keep in mind. And we'll be back in the metaverse again in, in future episodes as we continue to unpack. Thank you, Nick, for your time today. And I will actually see you back here tomorrow and everyone else right here on Discern.